Vivian. I found it. The book you lost. You... You found it. Thank you, Clive. Even though I asked this of you, I was not entirely sure it would be possible. I feared the executors had seized every copy. I met with one of these... executors, and I convinced him to let me keep it. He told me something. That the truth is just a matter of collective belief, and that if enough people believe a lie, that lie becomes the truth. It does. But it also means that the truth is not immutable, that it can be changed, provided that those who wish to change it can convince enough people that their perspective is the correct one. As the sad history of the bearers proves. You said that the book inspired you to become a scholar. It did. Or its author, rather. She was a heretic, you see. A firebrand and a dissenter. A gallows stood ready for her in every corner of the realm. And by shunning society, or perhaps being shunned by it, she stumbled upon a truth so potent that an entire realm trembled at the prospect of its utterance. I, too, have always felt somehow set apart from the world of men. A stranger to my own species. She taught me that my solitude was not a curse. But a gift, and that, though my journey to the truth might be a lonely one, what I found at my destination would be more than worth the cost. Do you still feel that way? That you're not... one of us? Honestly? I'm not entirely sure anymore. Since coming to the hideaway, I find my thinking somewhat... clouded. Perhaps the result of studying mankind from a rather closer perspective than I had intended. But the more I study, the more I find value in this perspective. In looking not from the outside, but from within. So if you'll permit me, I'd like to continue my work here. Remember, Clive, when enough people believe, Belief begets truth. Give the men and women of this benighted world the gift of truth. Make them believe in you, as I do. I'll try, Vivian. I'll try. I hear that you traveled to Ash, Sid. Did you by any chance recover the names of my fallen friends? I did. Yes. If I may, the bearer registry. The director was a brutal man. He got no worse than he deserved. The registry was all I found beneath the tree. There was no sign of a body. Nor any record of what happened to the children after the orphanage closed. I pray that at least some of them survived. 
All their names are here. The ones we lost. My friends. My light in those dark times. I can still remember their faces. Like it was yesterday. Children who were taken from their bunks in the morning. Never to return. No explanation ever offered. They'd be happy to know that you survived, Herman. But why did I make it out alive? When so many others died in that awful place. It's not your fault. And blaming yourself won't bring them back. Honor their memory. See that their names live on. That way at least. They're never truly gone. Thank you. Sid. I'm going to write a book. An account of the horrors of Badbach, and the spirit of those its custodians sought to crush. All of Valisthea will know of our suffering, and in the name of those I lost, I will not let it happen again. Neither will I. These records would have been buried for all eternity, were it not for you. <laughs> Thank you. realm will hear of Badbach, and I pray that the tale of my fallen friends will spare future generations the horror we endured. Thank you for helping keep their memory alive. The realm will hear of Badbach. What else could it be? So, there's a new mother. Passing over it, won't see the hens fed. One moment you think you've freed the realm from your fate. Do you think Sid will tell us about his adventures in Ash? I doubt it. I heard he's leaving again. Well then maybe when he gets back. Say what you will, Lady Karen has seen our show. Yeah. Well, thank for you, dear. Forget this kindness, my lord. I shall go to Eastport, but as soon as the rebuilding work is complete, I promise to return.
it's usually me making demands of Hippocrates. I wonder what this is about. somewhere, Sid. Can we come? I promise we'll be good. Oh. Not a word in this one, either. Sid, did you know that chocobos are far more resilient to the effects... Lawsman Harpocrates. I received your note. Ah, yes. I expect you're wondering what this is all about. <laughs> You spoke of making amends with Dion, but I can't imagine what for. Then I should begin by telling you that I was once his tutor. This was some years ago, of course, before I joined Sid in his hideaway. At that time, I was counted among the foremost scholars of Oriflam, and was accordingly invited to the palace to supervise the young prince's education, all to ensure that the future emperor had a firm grounding in, well, Everything an emperor should. History, religion, commerce, government. Alas, our time together was cut short when Dion left to join the Dragoons. His studies no longer being deemed necessary. I had not expected to meet with him again, least of all here. Have you spoken with him? No, I... <laughs> I have yet to find the right moment. His Highness always seems so preoccupied, especially when alone. I would not wish to disturb his ruminations with idle words of greeting. Not when I know he dwells upon the evil Ultima had him commit in the Dominion. The guilt weighs heavily on him, I know. But as you say, that was Ultima's doing. Surely you can't blame yourself. When I first met him, it was not guilt, but his people's expectations that weighed heavily upon him, and I did nothing to ease that burden. He bore it alone, until the day he could not bear it any longer. It is one of my greatest regrets that I only ever offered him my wisdom, when what he truly needed was friendship. The blame for Dion's transgressions lies not only on his shoulders, but on mine. I see. I'm ready to help you in any way that I can. Then I beg that you bring me a wild wyvern tail. Apothecaries across the ages agree that even to glimpse such a flower is to be granted inner solace. Fabulists and fraudsters all, of course. But there is oft a seed of truth to be found where even the most outlandish opinions align. Well, it can't hurt to try. Where can I find this flower? And how will I know it? You have seen cultivated wyvern tales before, I trust. The lily-white blossoms from whose roots the poisonous ink for the brand is distilled. Well, those which grow in the wild differ only in their purple hue. The harsher the environment in which they are raised, the deeper the color. There is a waterfall 
in Rick Mal's roost across the strait, where the flowers once grew in abundance. Whether they still survive there, I know not. But try as I might, I can find no likelier location. It's all right. I'll find you a wife and tail one way or another. Thank you, Clive. And please, be safe.
Seems this place has been flooded twice over. Purple flowers blooming next to a waterfall. Shouldn't be too hard to find. Enough for a bunch, I suppose. found the flowers you were looking for. You did? I think I did. <sighs> you 
did indeed. My dear boy, thank you. You wanted to make Dion a gift of one, did you not? Shall I invite him to join us? Oh, uh, I don't... <laughs> it's no trouble. I'll go and fetch him. Do me the honor of accompanying me. No. It is time, then. <laughs> no. Only to the shelves. Our lawsman has something he'd like to give you. Master Harpocrates. No. I dare not show my face before him. Not after everything I have done. I have taken countless innocent lives and ruined countless more all because I was weak I have sworn to atone for my crimes or die in the attempt but were I to meet with him again and see in his eyes what I have become I fear that my resolve might falter and that is all the more reason to do it Test your resolve. Prove to yourself, and to him, how strong it truly is. You are right. I must, at the very least, offer him my gratitude. Very well, then. Take me to him. Follow me. Even now, I hesitate to approach him. What must he think of me? You'd be surprised. Master Harpocrates, pray, accept my apologies for leaving your tutelage before my studies were complete. Your lessons opened my mind to a world quite unlike the one I had imagined from within the gilded confines of the palace. And I shall be forever grateful for the efforts you made to enlighten me. Lift up your head, your highness. The deeds of youth require no apology. That you took the time to visit me says much about the man you have become. Now, there is something I would like to show you. Is that a wyvern tale? The color is unfamiliar to me. Because it is unique to those found in the wild. Something in the harsh environment in which they grow lends them this striking hue. Their roots are indistinguishable from those of their hothouse cousins, but once they bloom, the difference is immediately apparent. In this flower, I see you, Your Highness. Its roots were the roots of a wyvern tail, with all that implies. But they do not define it, just as yours do not define you. I 
want you to have it, that it might remind you of this truth. Master Harpocrates, I would ask of you a service. Keep your gift until I have fulfilled my duty to the realm, for only then shall I be deserving of it. As you wish, Your Highness. I shall await your return. Our roots do not define us. No wonder my stepmother didn't like him. For reuniting me with memories I had thought long lost. I shall not forget this. Not for you. I fear I might never have found the right moment to speak with him. Not to mention the wyvern tales. I shall plant their seeds that I might not disappoint His Highness upon his return. I hope the soul in the hideaway is to their liking. Why, these flowers bloomed in the bleak black wastes of Walud. I'm sure Nigel's yard will suit them to a tea. When it comes to expressing one's gratitude, I find that words are seldom sufficient. Here. What's this? A Stolas quill. Or more precisely, my Stolas quill. It is said that an owl's feathers are steeped in the wishes it hears over its long lifetime. All those words just waiting to pour out onto the page. So consider this my wish for you. That one day, you may put down your sword and pick up that pen. Well, when that day comes, I'll certainly have a lot to write about. Thank you, Harpocrates. It shall have pride of place in my chamber.
Ah, it's a dangerous world out there. You'll not find a better price than that. Come again. Oh, don't. I'm not much bothered either way.
Sweet dreams.
Still alive, are ya? It'd better all be here. Clive, if you see me dad up there, tell him we were right to leave his legacy with you. <laughs> tell him he'll be in the front row. There's no way he'd miss this. Well, behave yourself, Mitt. <laughs> we'll see. So, you're in charge now, Gav. And what does Taya have to say about that? Come back before she finds out, eh? I shall pray for your safe return. That's kind of you, but you should pray he took his medicine. I didn't spend all night grinding herbs for his lordship to leave them on his nightstand. Again. <laughs> you needn't fear, Lady Dyer. And thank you. See that your brother comes back in one piece. Or, at most, two. Any more and you can heal him yourself. I'll keep that in mind. Well, there's nothing to say that hasn't already been said. But that's never stopped me before, so just you do what needs doing. And don't worry about us. We'll do our best, Uncle. That'll be well. Hmm. If that is all? Not quite. Jill. It's time, isn't it? It is. Take care of him. <laughs> and you. You take care of her too, boy. Don't forget, Clive. We all choose our own path. Believe in yours. 
I do. I'll be back, I promise. I love you, Jill. I know. I love you, too. Now, we have a god to kill. Joshua! Already am.
So, this is Origin. A far cry from heaven. Where it all began. Where it all begins. Our Ark. Your Architect. There you are. It was here that we slumbered. Here that we waited.